All right, we have here another example coming from chapter three. We're gonna look at our PPF and comparative advantage. All right, we have an example where Jerry has 10,000 hours to produce two goods. He can produce coffee or cars. To produce one coffee, it requires 10 hours and it requires 50 hours to produce one car. His good friend George also has 10,000 hours to produce two goods coffees and cars. For George, it requires him 20 hours to produce one coffee and 50 hours to produce one car. So we want to be able to graph both of these PPFs and then talk about who has a comparative advantage in each good. So let's first look at Jerry. So Jerry is going to produce cars and coffee. So we're going to go to our graph and I'm going to graph out what Jerry looks like. Okay, so not in the straightest lines. So here's Jerry. I'm going to put coffee on my y-axis, just because that's what I'm going to do. And cars on my x-axis. Those can be switched. The solutions will change just slightly in terms of the numbers, but not the actual answer of who has comparative advantage. So if Jerry has 10,000 hours, and he dedicates all of those hours to producing coffee. So for him to produce one coffee requires 10 hours. So I divide that by 10 and he can produce, if he dedicates all of his resources to coffee, 1,000 cups of coffee. So I'm going to put 1,000 up there. He also has 10,000 hours and if he were to dedicate all of those towards cars, it takes him 50 hours per car so that would mean we get 10,000 divided by 50, and that would leave us with 200 cars. So I'm going to take that 1,000 and bring that line right about there. So he can produce 200 cars. And that's Jerry's PPF. And I can draw the equation for that in y, equal, y equals mx plus b by saying coffee equals the slope of the line, remember, is rise over run. So it's 1,000 divided by 200, which is, we'll just write that out. That's negative 5 times cars plus our y-intercept, which is 1,000. So I'm going to rewrite that as coffee equals negative 5 cars plus 1,000. And so what this tells us is the slope here is for every additional car, if I start here, that I produce, so I want to go over one, it tells me I have to give up five cups of coffee. So this negative five is the opportunity cost of cars. Each car to produce costs me five cups of coffee. So there's Jerry. Now let's look at our good friend George. Okay, so George is going to be over here. Let's draw George's PPF. And I'm going to have the axes match, so my y-axis is coffee. My x-axis is cars. So for George, he also has 10,000 hours. And if he were to dedicate all of his hours to producing coffee, take him 20 hours to produce one cup of coffee. So this means he would have the ability to produce 500 cups of coffee. So that's our first point, and we'll try to draw it a little more to scale. So here's 500. And if you dedicate all of his hours to cars, it also costs him 50 hours to produce a car. So he could produce 200 cars. So we take that 500, bring it down here, and so he could produce 200 cars. To draw that line, we do coffee equals the slope, which is 500 divided by 200.
the negative out in front, so it's decreasing, times cars, plus 500. So to rewrite that, coffee equals, now I could do 5 halves, but let's go ahead and just divide that. So negative 2.5 cars plus 500. And that's what we have for George. And now the question is, well, what's the opportunity cost for George? So for every car that George produces, it's going to cost him two and a half cars. So the opportunity cost for Jerry is five. So let's write this. Opportunity cost, and this is in terms of cars, is equal to five. But for George, the opportunity cost for cars is 2.5. So who can produce cars more efficiently? Who has the comparative advantage in producing cars? Well, in this case, George Costanza is the winner. So George has the comparative advantage in cars because he can produce cars at a lower cost. Now, if George has the comparative advantage in cars, it's automatically that Jerry's going to have the comparative advantage in coffee. All right, now to show that, I would then say, well, what if I give up one car, how much cups of coffee does it take? So the opportunity cost of coffee is equal to one over five or 0.2. Now, the opportunity cost of coffee for George is 1 over 2.5, or 2 fifths, or 0.4. So which number is lower? We're there. Jerry's going to be the winner, or has the comparative advantage in producing coffee. The other way to look at it is to go back to our original example. And they both have the same number of hours. And because they have the same number of hours, this is, might be an easy way to look at it. Well, who's better at producing cars? Well, they're both as equally as efficient in producing cars. It takes them both 50 hours. But Jerry is actually better at producing coffee than George because it requires him 10 hours to produce one cup, and George it requires twice as much. So Jerry would have the comparative advantage in coffee leaving us then with George having the comparative advantage in producing cars. Now, in terms of absolute advantage, Jerry has the absolute advantage in producing coffee, and they have the equal absolute advantage in producing cars. And so that's how we can use a PPF to look at who has a comparative advantage.